like the idea of, the, of showing something off your shelf, but I guess it, it resembles manifestation. When you think of something, you end up getting it. So if you really want something, think about it, observe it. 80% of it is you believing in yourself and you get what you think about. Whatever you heard of me ain't worthy to me. I'm just too cutthroat, verbal surgery. How you claim to know that stuff when your shelf's too high? I keep mine at eye level. What you trying to hide? Peace, 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 beautiful family. This is Dr. Walter Hidalgo, and this is the Know Thy Shelf podcast. The Know Thy Shelf podcast utilizes the metaphor of the shelf in order to extrapolate the self. And the way we do that is we invite guests to come in and share something about themselves. And before I introduce my guests, uh, got to give a few shout outs to some people we rocking with. I want to give a big shout out to my brother Steve and his 2020 collections. Uh, check out the merch, check out the incense, check out all that beautiful, great stuff. Uh, I want to holla at my boy Emilio and his highly living gear, which I highly recommend. Um, and if you're looking for any coaching for teens, um, any workshops for youth and young adults, um, check out our website, knowthyshelf.tv. Uh, uh, I've done workshops on things such as uh, bullying, um, the pros and cons of social media, the theology of hip hop. There's a plethora of things out there available uh, for teens, young adults, including parents. And once in a while, I got to throw it out there, man. Um, definitely check out my book. Um, I've reached the 10 year anniversary last year. Um, Beyond the Fall Walls, the rising ministry and spirituality of hip hop. Is hip hop spiritual? Um, if you want to know, read it. And as we always do, before I introduce the guests, is I I'd like to give a big shout out to a group of individuals. And today, I want to give a big shout out to all my chief executive operators. I want to give a big shout out to all my financial advisors. Yo. I want to give a big shout out and, and, and I'm very heavily involved in this world, especially now, all of my realtors. Anybody doing anything with real estate because, you know, I learned a lot from my father doing that. Shout out to my dad. And if there's one thing you got to have in your category, um, it's real estate. I can't, I can't even stress that because today, I, you know, this is one of the guests that I have that I don't know personally. I found him. He actually found me um, online. And I'm so grateful and humble because today I got somebody with me, as I, as I was saying before we hit that record button, that I'm so proud because I just admire people that are that they're on their hustle, especially when they're young. I got with me today, Sari Ibrahim. What's good, family? Dr. Hidalgo, thank you so much for having me on. I appreciate it, man. Absolutely, man. So as we always do, um, I like to contextualize things. Yeah. Uh, and one of the ways I do that is I ask guests, um, if we were to step into Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventures, have you ever seen that movie? No, I can't say that I have. <laughs> oh, I, now I'm aging myself. It's super throwback. <laughs> uh, but what it was, it was two guys that were, it, they, they just went on a time machine and they would go back in time. So I want us to go back in time to a young Ur, Sari, um, because you're originally from? Chicago. Chi-Town Stan. Oh, I always say Chi Town is my second favorite city. <laughs> of course, after New York. Yeah. But um, shout out to all my Chi Town people. Um, I, I'm heavily involved in the Chi community. Shout out to the South Side, the West Side. Uh, we continue to pray for folks out there. I know, you know, for a long time. I don't know how it is now. Um, you know, it was called Chi Rat. You know, yeah. we pray for all those individuals out there. And Chicago is a beautiful city with beautiful people, such as yourself, my brother. So if we were to <laughs> step back to a younger Sari, what would we see? What would we hear? Um, you know, give us the lay of your land of, of, of who you are. Yeah, thank you for that. Uh, and I'm glad to be here. And so nice to meet you and talk to you. Um, 
you know, I'm, as mentioned, I'm from Chicago, Illinois. I was born and raised here. I grew up uh, actually on the south side and then moved to the north side with my wife uh, a few years ago. And yeah, and, I, and I've always been very curious. I always used to like ask a lot of questions growing up. Um, I uh, w- one of my favorite classes in high school was consumer economics. That's where we would like learn mm-hmm. how to like write checks and we mm-hmm. learn like this is a credit card. There's interest, you know, and they got me thinking a lot like this is actually pretty important stuff. And I, and I felt like we should have gone more in depth, you know, not just the basics. We should go a little bit further into um, finance and how economics works because it's a huge part of people's lives and how we live. Right. So. I, I wanted that to be my focus in life. I wanted to focus on helping people with financial problems, money problems, but I didn't really know, you know, I was still young. I didn't really know what that career was called. I just thought it was financial consultant, financial planner. I didn't really know. So I went through college, got my MBA. After I got my MBA, I started to kind of go closer to my dream. And I started a company called Financial Asset Protection. So that's exactly what we do. We, we're a financial consulting firm. We help clients in all 50 states um, save, save money, get out of debt, start their businesses, buy real estate. As you mentioned, it's really important to own real estate. You know, so, so in other words, we just kind of help people with money problems. And I feel like that's the, the the exact thing I've always wanted to do is just help people solve financial problems, not necessarily sell things or push people in a certain direction, but more so of what's, your, what's going on in your life and how can I help you? Growing up, um, how much of what you've seen in your community, including your family, uh, impacted or influenced you to uh, go down this path? Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. So I grew up in a, a middle class area. We weren't rich. We weren't poor either, you know, um, but at the same time, there was kind of this need to always strive to be uh, to be better, to be good. You know, I grew up in an immigrant household around a lot of other immigrant families from all over, mm. from all over the world. So there was this pressure, right, to do good, to do, you know, to impress your family, to impress your relatives, you know, and um for for wanting us to to do good my family you know for wanting us to do good they also didn't really encourage un- entrepreneurship they wanted us to work for bigger companies you know mm-hmm. um kind of integrate with american society you know and entrepreneurship was a kind of like this struggle they didn't want us to struggle so i kind of felt like that was problematic right it was like well why not why not have both why not do good great things while also being an entrepreneur it's not like one has to cross out the other you could do great things. So yeah, th- there was definitely a lot of pressure on me to to kind of understand how money works in this country and to um, and, and to strive for bigger things. So I definitely feel like, you know, what I'm doing right now is helping people get there. Um, and there's also, I have a different mentality when it comes to money, right? Like I grew up saving. I always grew up with this mm-hmm. scarcity mindset. Like if you lose money, that's it. It's kind of gone forever. There is no like recycling of that money. You know what I mean? That's immigrant right. immigrant that's family. Right. You know? yeah. Um, but yeah, that's a good question. And I felt like it, it really connects a lot with, with what I'm doing today. You know, so we have to be very conscious of that. And especially again, even if you feel bad or whatever, but you say something that adds to it by way of these two, you become part of it. So the most important thing that I leave you all with this is watch me post. It's that young project baby who been live from the checks and gun thought bread about his bread with no need to flex with the hunger and the hustle while I still keep it fresh. The workshop tonight was excellent. The kids were engaged and Walter did a great job. He even had me and Donald answer questions. So can't wait for the next one. I think his message is timeless and how it was delivered, it was engaging, meaningful and powerful and we took away something also which is the power of relationship whether it's digital or in person. So. As they say, sometimes uh, to get into Facebook, you gotta get your face in a book. And uh, that was one of our takeaways. Thank you very much, Dr. Hidalgo. Session was excellent. The kids were really engaged. They really understood and learned a lot about social media and what their impact could be. Um, I'm looking forward to the next session. Got my yeah, and you said so. Uh, immigrant parents from where? If I'm so mad. from the Middle East. So originally well, from Palestine. Yeah. Dope, and yo, shout out to oh, I went to Palestine, and oh, really? oh man, shout out to Israel, Palestine, all those areas. Uh, I'm actually go, um, with my fiance going to go to Egypt oh, nice. um, soon, so I'm heavy on traveling, and and I say that because you know I'm 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 the product of immigrant parents that came from Guatemala. Yeah, and it's just something that does um that that experience that indirectly impacts us because we see the struggles of our family and we know 
that 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 serves as as a, as a, as a um, extra oomph to our battery to do better, yep. see better, you know, and, and interact better in the world because we see the struggles. Um, and especially in a place like Chi Town, mm -hmm. where it's so diverse, and and a lot of times the redlining is super blatant, and we see those dichotomies of different incomes based on, based on ethnic uh, enclaves and, and immigration, uh, migrations, and etc. But you know, I, I found it interesting because you know I had to do my due diligence. Yes, sir. Um, and I and I noticed that you studied digital forensics, <laughs> and then you moved to an MBA. And I say that because. You, we're, we're no different. Like I studied criminal justice and poli side, and then I went super right and studied theology. Now I'm a yeah. social theologian. Um, how, what, what, what shifted? What happened in between those spaces? Yeah, yeah. So I, um, I kind of like flipped a lot between what, what what I wanted to do. So when I graduated high school, I was like, you know what, I'll do. I'll get a bachelor's degree in criminal justice with a concentration in digital forensics, and then go to law school and then become a criminal defense attorney and help. You know, people in my community, and you know, um, that's that's a that's a whole other side. But I do believe that there's a problem in the in the U.S. with um, over litigation, especially amongst youth, mm. especially amongst mm -hmm. um, minority mm -hmm. groups. You know, but that's a whole separate topic. You know, uh, so I wanted to kind of go for that field. But then after that, I realized, you know, maybe I don't know. I just took a guess. I was like, maybe you know, law school is not for me. Maybe it's not being a lawyer. Maybe I could do more good for the world if I understand business more. And, and again, it's not to cross one up to the other. It's not like if I do business, I can't do legal work. Um, so I got my MBA done. And then that's kind of how I, I flipped between undergrad in criminal justice to uh, MBA. But yeah, mm. I feel like now what I'm doing is more aligned with what I actually want to do. Um, I've, I know a lot of lawyers and it's, it's, a, it's definitely of it's not as easy as it looks. It's, it's, a, it's a very hard field to, uh, to make it in. And there's a lot of work involved. Uh, but shout out to them, you know, and I'm, I'm very proud of what they're doing. Yeah. And again, we're so much alike because I wanted to go to the attorney path. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Took the LSATs and, yeah. and, and, and I know so many people within the criminal justice field from all different branches. And at one point I wanted to do um, counterintelligence with the CIA. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I went to Northeastern University in Boston oh, nice. and studied uh, and it, it was it was amazing. But, you know, as the saying goes, God laughs at our plans and we got to go where God takes us. Yeah. And, and God took you um, toward the direction of writing your book um thinking like a bank and yes, now sir. it's a podcast yeah talk to us about that yeah yeah definitely yeah so i wrote a book it's not really i can't say yeah it's a book a full-blown book it's a ebook it's like 30 or 40 pages mm -hmm. long i actually give it away for free just to kind of spread the word for free um and then yeah oh. so uh, then i started a podcast thinking like a bank and it's just like the title of it right it's how does how would a bank think about money and how you could apply those strategies and principles you know so if we think about for example banks in a community or in a in society mm -hmm. they typically have the most money they typically control the most money which probably means that they know the most about money compared to other organizations around them they because you know if a hospital is going up if a law firm is going up if a school is going up there's probably a bank backing it controlling the terms and conditions behind it and a lot of the principles that banks use are applicable to everyone, even individuals and small businesses. So I wanted to dig deeper into that because it aligns very well with our business and helping people. So I want to dig deeper into those principles and then share them on in the ebook and in the podcast. So like some principles could be how to save more money, how to protect it from various risks, how to grow it regardless of what the economy does, how to save on taxes, how to qualify for tax credits and tax deductions. So I have all these different subjects in the podcast. You can go through them. We're, we're launching episode 51 today. Uh, you can go through our podcast and you could see which one is relevant to you, which episode is relevant to you. But yeah, that's kind of why we did it. It's just to kind of spread more awareness about how to think more like not just think like a consumer or think like a borrower, but actually think like a banker or think like a bank. You know, we don't we don't really understand because when you look at uh, certain ethnic groups and yeah. enclaves, uh, one of the main reasons they thrive is because they own a bank yes right the yes. The, the power and the leverage behind a bank uh, a school a mm -hmm. hospital uh police or, or, or some yeah. sort of security those are all intricate um landmarks that are necessary for community to thrive um how does one be how does one uh train 
thyself to think like a bank? What what are what are certain tools that you need to 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 better thrive as a bank? So that because see, I say this because I think this is so important. Yo. This yep. is so important, Sarah, and this is exactly what I'm talking about. It's very difficult for you to help people when you're broke. Exactly. Yeah. You spot. You know on. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Speak on that more for us, Sarah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You're, you're so right. Yeah, exactly. In order to do more things, you need to have resources, right? You need to have connections. You need to be able to provide services. It's very difficult to provide services when you don't have the services. But I want to go back to, you know, previously you asked, you know, how do you, how does one do that? How do you actually think like a bank? How do you apply those strategies, principles? So for one, you could check out for sure our podcast. We talk about a lot of that stuff. And then this is something that aligns with what you do and coaching. So it's very important to, this Super is extremely important. important to work with mentors and coaches throughout your whole life um, for areas that you want to advance in. So we, you know, we're a financial coach. There are a lot of other financial coaches out there to so work with a coach. And then some of them are even pro bono. What that means is they only get paid after you reach a goal or after you accomplish something. So in other words, you don't have to pay up front because that's something that a lot of people are kind of worried about. It's like, oh yeah, I get it. You have to hire a professional to help you. But what if I can't afford a professional? There are ways that you could work with professionals um, for a low cost or free, or even you defer the cost into the future and then they get paid in a different way later on. We try to help you as much as possible until uh, for free or in, in different ways to defer the payment out. So, uh, payment, uh, so, so coaching helps you a lot to accomplish that. And there's more of a philosophical, uh, more philosophy behind that. Because if you look at people who get ahead in life, especially education, in academics, in, in finance, in careers, a lot of their success is attributed to their backbones, their support systems. Who is supporting them? Super you know, facts. if you're, yes. you know, you're both your parents are attorneys and they've been supporting you since you were a kid, you're probably going to get much further ahead. Not to say that if you don't have, you know, successful parents or, or a backbone, you can't be successful. The point is to find that backbone. That's what you want to do. And coaching and mentorship is the way to do it. I've started. I started my business and I failed a few times until it actually became successful. And it's, it's primarily directed to the coaching and mentorship I've had backing me up. I've hired about five coaches slash mentors in the last seven years. And that's a huge direct correlation to the success I'm seeing right now. So I wouldn't have the success without the coaches and mentors pushing me. And, um, and then the same is true, reaching your financial goals. You need somebody to kind of hold you accountable to certain things and to teach you certain principles, uh, certain, you know, there's a book called uh, the psychology of money and the book yes. starts off talking. Yes, yeah, I've read a, that good one. Yep. Great. Yeah. I'm still, I'm still halfway through it, but I just, the, even the beginning of the book is resonating with me. The author says that, you know, when it's not about, um, it's not about the, uh, how much money you're making, nor is it about how much money you have. It's about your behavior when it comes to money. Facts. So. So, you know what I mean? So that your behavior judges everything. You're, you know, um, and then it brings in, this also brings it into another category of mindset. So about 20% of life is technical things, things that we can't really directly control, like where you grew up, what college you went to, what certifications you have, licenses, things like that, like more hard things. 80% um, of it, the vast majority of it, 80% of it is the way you feel about yourself. So... So remember that, like it's um, most of the things you want to accomplish in life directly reflect on the way you believe in yourself and the way you perceive yourself. Yeah, and and who 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 are some of the the mentors or people that you looked up that uh, you know influenced you to to get to where you are now? Yeah, I honestly I lost count. So it's it's a combination. <laughs> Word up, that's facts <laughs> because it shifts, it changes, yeah. and you know we don't look at mentors as seasonal too yeah you know some people pass so they move on and, yeah. and etc but the gems you pick up is forever exactly some of the mentors i have are actual people i've worked with and then some of them are people who wrote books 100 years ago who are no longer with us today mm -hmm. so you know it's a combination of all those some of them are famous people some of them are people i i talk to personally through my phone you know so it's it's uh and i think you want to be diversified you want to have a mentor for your communication a mentor for your finances a mentor for your career outlook a mentor for different areas uh in and in, in combination with coaching too so yeah definitely it's a huge huge uh reason for for the success of a lot of people i work with i work with a lot of high net worth individuals as well mm -hmm. and i get to observe their behavior and a lot of their behavior mm -hmm. is attributed to they all have mentors. They all have gone through coaching. They all have somebody holding them accountable. And they're always striving for the next thing, that, which is a really important thing I wanted to mention is that 
um, when you reach your goals, you always want to kind of increase them later on. And instead of being complacent, and everybody has their own goals and their own things they want to strive for. But I think that pushing yourself for that next level is going to help you. Um, it helps with kind of being having a clear mindset and clarity mm -hmm. and really accomplishing like the next thing in your life. Facts, facts. And, you know, and I think a, a lot of this also has to do is I always tell people like, hey, yes, you can have that mentor, but we're living in a world right now where Google is a beautiful thing. Man. Yeah. Like there's so much information accessible to us 24 hours every single day. You can do enough of the work, enough of the research that if you still got enough questions, you can meet that mentor. You can find them somewhere yeah. and you can literally pick up the pieces of where you left off or you require questions because once you meet that mentor and you're already talking that lexicon, that lingo, yes. they're already going to, they're going to take you serious. Yes. They're going to know that you're not playing around because you did your due diligence. So exactly. it's, 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 it's always like, I always tell people, yes, get your mentor, but you got to meet your mentor halfway because you can expedite this process much more quickly. If you already start doing the due diligence, start talking that language. If you're a realtor and you want to do real estate, start talking that real estate language. Yes. You know what I'm yes. saying? So once you get to that mentor, you're already kind of like 80% there. Yes. Sari, as we always do, um, we invite guests to, um, share something that comes out of their shelves yeah what you got for us family okay so this is don't laugh at me but uh <laughs> never 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 okay so this right here can you see it yeah eiffel tower yeah. have you been yeah so that's that's why i wanted to share it is that um my wife and i we've always wanted to go we've always wanted to go to paris and see the eiffel tower and um when we got married uh that was where we went on our honeymoon and it was kind of like it symbolizes how you when you want something you end up getting it so every so most of the things we are living in today and we, we we're receiving today are based off of what we've thought about in the past you know what i mean so 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 yeah I, I you know i felt like we both manifested that journey and going to paris and seeing i remember looking at the eiffel tower under and standing i was like i can't believe i'm actually here it was easy. Like we just had to buy the tickets, you know, go there, schedule it all out, budget out the trip. But at the same time, it's like when you accomplish it, it's it, it, it happened because you thought about it, because you believed it, because you thought about it. That's just you know, it's a small, you know, it's not a you know big deal. <laughs> I just wanted to kind of share it, and um, you know, I like the idea of the of showing something off your shelf. But I guess it, it resembles manifestation. When you think of something, you end up getting it. So if you really want something, think about it observe it 80 percent of it is you believing in yourself and you will get what you think you get what you think about yeah and you know what's interesting you know a lot of what we're talking about obviously is money right yeah and we don't we don't understand that there's a spirituality associated yes. with money yes you know? um and, and and one way we know that we're doing anything in this world is we getting paid for it right yes. that's there's an exchange there so i think for you to to showcase something that is a manifestation of all the hard work and to have your your spouse with you at that moment that's that's a beautiful thing I and mean, you can't measure that right there sari yeah. I, the last thing you know that i wanted to ask you um is you know what's an advice that you would give that young person that's trying to follow your path particularly that is trying to get that money together what, what what's one or two things that you would you would say to that young individual yeah, so coaching, mentorship, seek a support system. Seek people that will help you accomplish your goals, even if it means that they will get um, something in return for helping you. That's okay. Business, have a business mindset, a win-win-win situation, organize those situations. The key to persuading people and convincing people to take action is to find what benefits them and then help connect them. So think, have that business mindset where you're looking for problems to solve and who you can help and who you can add value to. And then also focus really on what you want, not just, for example, I want a million dollars, you know, just like a lot of people have that just vague goal where it's like, I want a lot of money. And then you ask them like, how much money and when do you want to buy? They're like, doesn't matter. You know, it, it's just have specific goals, measurable goals, and then add in a why, a couple whys actually, like, why is it important to you? Why that? And these are these are these are relevant to yourself. These are you ask yourself these questions. There is no right or wrong answer, and everybody has a different why and a different situation. But it's important for you to identify your why because it helps you head in the right direction. You might be going in a direction you're like, oh, you know, this is not actually what I want to do. This is what 
is conventionally seen as good. This is what is seen as good by other people. And that's not really an accurate, or that's not really, um, that can really justify your, your future actions. You want to justify your future actions by outlining your whys. Why is it that you want to do this? Why is this important to you? Mm, facts. What, what does financial success look like for you? Yeah, financial success, in my opinion, is just being able to do things that you want to do in life, whether it's what time you wake up in the morning, what time you go to sleep, how much time you spend with your family, your friends. That, I feel like, is the ultimate wealth, is the control mm. of time. Mm, that's right. A lot of people, been time is wealth. Yes. We don't talk about how much time is wealth, you know, and, and I totally agree, agree with you on that. Yeah. Um, Sarah, if people want to find you, how can they connect with you? Give us all your you know, information if people um, want to connect with you and your services. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for that. So if you want to learn more about reaching your financial goals and you need help doing that, you can go to thinkinglikeabank.com. Uh, there's a free ebook you could download. You could check out our podcast. You can even schedule an appointment with me. There's a calendar link and I'll be more than happy to work with you. We can have a 15 minute intro call to see if we'd be a good fit. And yeah, I'll, I'll be more than happy to work with you. And thank, thank you, Dr. Hidalgo, for having me on your show. It's been an honor meeting you and talking to you. I think you're an awesome guy. I love your podcast. I love the name of it. You're, you know, keep it up. Keep up the good work. Yeah, Sarah, uh, yo, I reciprocate that. And I don't even know you and I love you, my brother. <laughs> <That's> like, <right. laughs> straight up because, yo, you're already married. Like, and you're, and you're like in your 30s. I think yes, you're, sir. You're, yes. You know, I'm about to be 40. You understand? And I, I was, my mind... <laughs> I was not there, man. And for you to be there already is such a blessing. Because by the time you get my age, man, I I'm going to have to be struggling to interview you again because you're going to be already on top, no, top, top, no. top. And this is exactly what we talk about. So as we always do, um, so I, so actually before I end with the call, I, I do have to say, like I said, I'm just so proud of you. Thank you. Don't ever stop. Be you and um, keep shining. As we always do, we end with a quote, um, and this quote comes to us from an anonymous person, and how fitting. It reads as such. Money speaks only one language. If you save me today, <laughs> I will save you tomorrow. Wow. Peace, family. <laughs>